It's important that we recognize who we are in Christ. I can't tell you how many times I've been in situations where, you know, I knew that I was like the only one that was a believer, someone who knew that, knew Jesus. And then I walk, someone walk in and immediately I knew that that person knew Jesus. And I could just look at them and you could see the life of God upon their life. They were just walking and living the way everybody, I mean, looking like everybody else. But you could see their spirit man was stronger than everybody else, that they had a connection with God. And so, you know, I remember, you know, times where I just pull up next, hey, you're a believer, aren't you? And it just smile at me, yeah, man. And we start talking about God in the midst of a bunch of heathens. <laughs> But we are saved. We have been summoned by God. We can hear from God. Think about the beautiful thing about that. Not only are we born again and Jesus lives in our heart, but we actually have been, we know how to follow our king, follow our savior, that the spirit of God inside of us is stirring and leading us. Amen. We are God's people. Amen. We are special people. And you know, the thing about, about church I've been, I've been, I used to think that people in church were, and people in the world, that all we were were thinking things. That, you know, the Bible says that a man thinketh, so is he. But I, I used to think that that's all we were. So I, I thought if I could just preach enough for them to change their thoughts and change their mind, that maybe that their life will change if I just change their thoughts. But I've been challenged in that area, and I realized something. That before we are thinking people, we are loving people. God is love. And if you really want to know God, it's because you love God. And so it's very tough for me to preach to somebody who's not in love with God. But once they fall in love with God, they show up for Bible school, they show up for prayer meetings, they show up for outreach, they show up for pantry, they send me messages, they, they, they are on the prayer lines. I mean, when they love God, they just want more of God. They do service in the morning and a service in the evening in McAllen. They just want more of God and they want more of his fellowship and his communion. Some, some wives are so in love with God, but their husbands, you know, they, they don't love God yet. And they don't understand, why are you always at church? Why are you always growing with God? But the one thing they cannot deny is that they're so happy. They're not defeated and broken, but they got joy and peace. Matter of fact, there was a testimony of one great man of God, you, you know, uh, he helped in the ministry, him and his family, they, they blessed this ministry so much. But his wife fell in love with God, and, and the man started seeing the, the things of God upon his wife that he got jealous that his wife was so happy, so he started coming to church, and he fell in love with God too, amen. Hallelujah. You know, I think the greatest, the greatest uh, message that you have to preach is your testimony about what God has done for you. Amen. I mean, if you're not happy, don't tell people that God loves you. I mean, if you've been beaten, broken, and you've been sucking on lemons, and, 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 and you don't know the love and the peace of God, and you want to start preaching to people about Jesus, I mean, what kind of Jesus are you serving if you don't have victory? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll be like, uh, you know, that one I don't want. I want the one that, that, that saves and delivers and sets people free and has joy and peace. Amen. Hallelujah. And so as a people of God, you hear from God, you gather, but it's because we want to grow in love for God. Amen. So I, I instructed our, our church and our staff, and, and I'm telling you our commitment to our worship experience on Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, whenever we gather for service, our whole focus is to help people fall in love with Jesus. And you being here, your whole focus is I just want to fall, I want to, I want to know him more so I can love him more. Amen. Amen. Because when you fall in love with Jesus, you can't get your mind off of him. When I met Veronica... I kept thinking about Veronica. We didn't have messenger back then. So we wrote letters to each other. Well, we really didn't have text message back then. That was our text, amen. 
we, 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 did, we did have a messenger. We did have a messenger. I used to write a letter and give it to her friend so that she could, give, she could get it. And she used to write a letter and give it to my friend so that I could get it. Amen. That was our messenger. Amen. But I couldn't stop thinking about her, and I still can't stop thinking about her. We, we, we put, we put a, an app on our phone, so when she was traveling to, to, to Florida, my, my daughter Crystal is going to Bible school in Florida right now. And so when she was traveling in Florida, I could see their progress as they were driving over there. And she'd be able to see where I'm at, and I'd be able to see where she's at. But she did something to her phone that every time I move, she gets an alert that I'm going someplace. And she's like, what did you do? I, get, I, I saw that you were at the store. I saw you were at the gym. I saw that you were here and there. She goes, where were you at 1 o'clock in the morning? I was, I was at Walmart buying paint. Look, it's new. <laughs> because she can't stop thinking about me. Amen. It's called stalking today. It's called stalking. <laughs> If I do a good job, if we do a good job together of gathering together in the house of God to fall in love with Jesus, we will all be stalkers of Jesus. Amen. We're going to follow him. We're going to chase after him because we love him so much. We just love him so much. Amen. And so that's going to be our commitment. We want to just fall in love with Jesus over and over and over and to know him is to love him. And the more you know him, the more you're going to love him. And so we're all going to grow together in Christ Jesus. Amen. Why? Because we are God's people. We are God's people. We are kingdom people. Amen. And we just want to fall in love over and over with him. Amen. If you can, go with me to 1 Corinthians. And I'm going to ask the, the, the helpers to please pass out the communion today. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we're going to take communion. I encourage those that are watching on TV right now to go and get something to, to partake of the communion, a piece of bread, something to drink, uh, some juice or something, so that you could take communion with us as well. And then we're going to worship the Lord together. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Now that last verse says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Hallelujah. Make sure the, the praise team gets communion too. Praise the Lord. This is so powerful. When we come together and take communion, the bread represents the body of Christ. It represents the body that was broken for our healing. It also represents the body that we are all together in him. That we are the body of Christ. The Bible says that, that he is the head and we are the body. So we are the hands of Jesus. We are, we are the voice of Jesus. We are the ones that bring Jesus to the world, that brings Jesus to the lost. And if we don't do our job telling people about Jesus, they will never know. The Bible says, how will they know without a preacher? I want to tell you that you're the preacher that God has raised up for this season, this time. You might look at me and say, well, Pastor Kevin will preach. I'm preaching as much as I can, but there are people that God's bringing you to, and he wants you to tell them about this love. He wants to use your hands to pray for them. He wants to use your life to be a blessing to them. Amen. That's where Jesus now becomes our Lord, where he puts his anointing, his power, and his presence upon us so that we can help others. So when we take of the, the bread, we're reminding ourselves of not only what he did for us, 
so that we could be healed and whole, but also that he has united us with a body that is all over the world, that will last forever, that we are complete and one in him. Amen? The Bible says that when we stand at that day of judgment, we'll be able to stand at that day of judgment. Why? Because we are with him. We are in him. So that the same love that God has for Jesus is the same love that he has for you. Amen? You're not separated from Christ. You have been united with Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? You are one with Christ. And this cup represents the blood of Jesus Christ. This blood was paid for the complete demolition of sin, the remission of sin. That means there's no more guilt or no more shame. There are a lot of things that we have done that have been negative and that have hurt others and have hurt ourselves. But when we surrender to Christ and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we now partake of his blood that washes all our sins away. Never to be remembered, never to be held against you. You are the, now the righteousness of Christ because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so the last statement when it says, when it says in the last statement here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. In that one statement, it challenges you to when you take of the of communion, to remember everything that Jesus did for you yesterday and recognize what the gift that he gave you of salvation and unity in the body, but also look forward to the future, how God has a purpose and a destiny for your life and how your life is now found in him. There's going to be a day where he's going to come again. And the Bible says the trumpet will sound and then the dead in Christ will rise up and then we'll be caught up again. We look forward to the day that our Lord and Savior comes back for his church. Amen. So we're not separated. We are not going to be separated from, from the Lord. We are always going to be united and he's going to come back for you. Amen. How many of y'all believe that? And so when we go through difficult times and we go through times where it seems like there's, we, don't, we might lose our hope, the very last hope we have is that he's coming again. And the Bible says that he's going to establish a new kingdom and there will be no more death, there will be no more tears, the former things will be all gone, a new has arose. Amen. That is our hope. That's what happens when we take communion. I'm reminding myself of what Jesus has done for me in the past. But I'm expecting what he promised he'll do in the future. Amen. So as we take this communion, we are partaking of the body. We are, we are declaring that we are part of the family of God. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. Maybe you are here today and you've never given your heart to God and you know that you have never surrendered to Jesus Christ. You know that you're not part of this family. But today you want to become part of this family. It is a simple prayer of faith. The Bible says if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And so salvation is for you today. Maybe you're watching on TV or over the internet and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. I want to invite everyone in this church and everyone that's watching at home, if you want to give your life to God, I want you to say this prayer with us today. Say this prayer and give your life to Jesus in faith. Repeat this prayer out loud with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come inside my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I want to live for you. Thank you for saving my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me your ways. I believe that I'm a child of God, that all my sins have been forgiven, and that right now I am born again and I am saved. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Now let's take up the communion. Father, I thank you for this great communion as a body, as a family. 
We bless the bread, we bless the cup, and we thank you, Lord, for, for your blood has, has washed our sins away. Your body has healed us completely. And so as a family, we take a communion today, and we thank you, Lord, that we could be one, that we are one with you, Lord Jesus. So we remember you, we honor you, and we thank you for all that you've done in Jesus' mighty name. Take, eat, and drink.